Eagle proud symbol of our country Keep on flying high up above And together we will stand And we'll restore the land Oh Eagle Keep on flying Eagle Welcome in Listen to the Eagle You're live calling radio station Hunting, fishing, God, family and country Burdock Caruth, your host, alongside the legend Paul Ott. We're coming to you live from the Reeds Metal Studio right here at the beautiful Farm Bureau building in Jackson, Mississippi. Alongside, like I said, Paul Ott, the legend, down in the beautiful Scenic Rivers region on beautiful Lake Dixie Springs. How about you, Paul Ott? It is beautiful, Bert. The weather's fine and the boats are on the lake out there catching fish. Paul Ott, it is summertime, summertime, and there is no better place to be than the beautiful Scenic Rivers region. And because it's close and dear to my heart, I can't imagine any more comforting, beautiful water than Lake Dixie Springs right there outside of Summit, Mississippi. You got that right. It is beautiful today. The sun's still shining on it. Looks like they're pulling in a few, Bert. Well, there's no doubt about it. You can do so many different things down there in that beautiful Scenic Rivers region from boating to skiing to fishing to kayaking to bird watching trails. I invite everybody to go to www.visitscenicrivers.com. That's www.visitscenicrivers.com. Not only is it just a beautiful place to visit, but they have events now all summer long throughout the fall. Uh, just go to their website. They've got the events listed right there. You don't want to miss out on any of those. And before we go to break, I want to update everybody. You know, we were all kind of freaking out about the chronic wasting disease. And before we go to this first break, I do want to update you from the Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. More than 1,400 white-tailed deer samples have been collected in Mississippi since October 1st, 2017. 574 of those deer samples were collected from the Mississippi's 25-mile chronic wasting disease management zone, which is Claiborne, Hines, Issaquina, Sharkey, Warren, and Yazoo counties. Only one deer, Paul Ott, only one deer out of all of these 1,400 samples tested positive for CWD, which was collected all the way back in January 25th of 2018 in Issaquina County. That deer was a 4.5-year-old deer that had died of natural causes. He was reported, but secondary test of his tissue was that it was CWD positive buck. But I just wanted to update everybody. Since then, over 1,400 deer samples and only one Paul Lott tested positive. So that's good news as we move forward. Y'all don't go yeah. anywhere. we got a great show tonight. When we come back, we've got Dr. Clay Johnson who has one of the coolest hunting quests of all time. Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of Listen to the Eagle, 1-800-251-5891. We'll be right back. Welcome back in to Listen to the Eagle. Thank you for making us a part of your day. We are your live call-in radio show on hunting, fishing, God, family, and country. Burdock Caruth, your host, coming to you from the Reeds Metal Studio. I invite each and every one of you, if you need a metal roof or you need a metal building for your hunting camp or a little fishing camp, go to reedsmetals.com. They will always take care of you. First-class service, good quality. Metal roofing is, is the way to go. It, it's the newest and the best way to keep from having leaks and repairs. So go to reedsmetals.com. I'd invite you to click on the Tupelo branch. They're all over the state, and they're in many states. But I personally invite you to go to the Tupelo branch. Heather Stiles and her staff are just first class and have taken care of me over the past few years. All right, let's bring him in, Paul Lott. Dr. Clay Johnson. Dr. Clay, welcome back. Listen to the Eagle. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you having me on. It's uh. Been a, it's been a good day back in Mississippi, that's for sure. Well, it's a beautiful day, beautiful day. And, Clay, I, I hope you've allotted a little time because I want to keep you on because we've got a lot of things to cover because you texted me right before the show something I had no idea that we really need to talk about. 
and that's going to be awesome. But I kind of want to save that to the end, if you can do that. I know that's going to be hard. <laughs> it, it is. It's it's, uh, it's it's real special to me. So, but we'll we'll hold off on it. That's for sure. All right, real quick before we go to our next break, I know I ask you to do this every time. We got about two minutes and thirty seconds. If you don't mind, for the listeners maybe that have not heard you on our show over the past few years, kind of tell them about your quest, what you're trying to accomplish, and going into this season, what was left, and then we'll come back the next segment and talk through it and get the update. All right, um, you know, like we we've, we've talked about it. There's six subspecies of the, the wild turkey in the world. Um, you've got the Osceola, the Eastern, the Rio Grande, the Miriam's turkey, the Goulds, and the Isolated. And when you kill the four, the, the Osceola, the Eastern, the Rio, and the Miriam, the National Wild Turkey Federation classifies that as what they call a Grand Slam. Um, you can... The other two are found in old Mexico, uh, for the majority of them, are the goulds and the oscillator. If you kill the goulds with the four, the first four that I mentioned, that gets you the royal slam. And, and then if you can com- complete all six of them, and, and it does not have to be in a single year, it can be done over the course of many years, but if you complete all six of them, you have completed what they call the world slam. Okay. And so, uh, in in the world of turkey hunting, you know, that's kind of a lot of people want to try to achieve that goal of killing a slam, especially a grand slam, the four that are primarily here, in the, or they all are in, in the U.S. And that uh, that was a first time goal of mine, and then eventually I did the Royal Slam and went on to complete the world as well. But then, so doing those, I was hunting other states. Because uh, you can go different places to get different subspecies, and was able to notch a, a few states under my belt. Uh, first thing you know, I had probably I don't know fifteen or twenty, and so then it became a goal that I was like, you know, it'd be really neat to try to achieve killing a turkey in the forty-nine states, not Alaska, that have a hunting season. Um, okay, stop right there. We gotta go to break. So that okay. became the quest, correct? To kill, harvest a turkey in all forty-nine states that have That's a hunting it. season. That's it. All right. So when we come back, he's gonna share with us going into this year. We were on the downhill spout. We saw the light at the end of the tunnel. He's gonna <laughs> tell us how many states he had left, and then we're gonna get an update. Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of Dr. Clay Johnson and the coolest quest in all of hunting. We'll be right back. Welcome back in to Listen to the Eagle. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Burdock Carruth, your host, coming to you live from the Reeds Metal Studio. You need a metal roof, you need a metal building for your hunting camp, go to reedsmetal.com. Alongside Paul Ott, the legend down in beautiful Scenic Rivers region on Lake Dixie Springs. Coming back, visiting with our guest, Dr. Clay Johnson, who not only is a dear friend of mine, but I have said this forever. I think he's got the coolest quest of all hunting. Clay, you kind of framed it before we went to break. Let me take another snapshot in case people just tuned in. Dr. Clay Johnson is on a quest to harvest a turkey in all 49 states that have a turkey season, excluding Alaska, for all the various reasons why. Now, Clay, the reason I say it's one of the coolest things that, that I've ever heard of hunting, how about this? We had Tyler Jordan on from Realtree. And I sh- now he's with the Bone Collector. He's in, he's daying out day out with all these professional turkey hunters. And I told him your quest, and he went, "Oh man, that's awesome." Let me know how he did. <laughs> so anyway, we're going into this year. You're on the downhill. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you don't mind, share with our listeners how many states were left, and then maybe walk us through this season if you don't mind. Absolutely. You know, to kind of set the stage just a little bit more, you know, when I found out actually from a from a gentleman who completed last year that he made uh, the the eighth person on record to actually complete the U.S. Super Slam, 
according wow. to the National Wild Turkey Federation records. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's quite a, it, it takes a lot of time and effort to, uh, to, to, to take on the quest, but going into the season, I liked five states. I liked uh, Louisiana and Arkansas. I liked in the Northeast, Connecticut, Maryland, and Delaware. And my goal was I at least wanted to be at those states when the season opened up in each one of those states. And okay. so uh, I had my spring set up. I uh, went along with, uh, with, with other places that I, that I typically like to go to and hunt, like Florida and Texas and, and, and South Dakota. But um, that was a goal. So uh, I started it off in Louisiana. I hunted opening weekend in Louisiana. I hunted uh, two days there and was unsuccessful. Um, I drove up to Arkansas hunted there on a Monday morning and killed one in Arkansas and then came back and the following Friday flew out to to Baltimore, Maryland to hunt in Delaware when it opened up on that Saturday. Um, I was up there for a week and I did kill in Maryland and Delaware. I killed my turkey in Delaware on the last day of the, the week that I was there, flying out that afternoon, cutting it down to the wire. But uh, pulled it all together. It was just an awesome, awesome hunt. And so I came, I actually came back home. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So let me get this straight. Going in, going into what you're about to do now is we have knocked off Arkansas, we've knocked off Maryland, and we've knocked off Delaware. So we have Connecticut and Louisiana, right? That's correct. That's correct. All right. All right. So when I actually <laughs> flew home from Baltimore on a Saturday night, I arranged for uh, to, to hunt in Louisiana the next morning. And it was just tough, tough weather conditions. Um, did get on some turkeys, but just couldn't make it happen. So that was a, a third try in, in Louisiana. Good night, and Clay. So, so it, it's so I flew up the next weekend to Connecticut and had just a a, a really good hunt up there. We we uh, a friend of mine came up with me and um, we we I knocked out Connecticut that weekend. We then I came back and I had basically one afternoon to hunt Louisiana and at this time it was I had four of the five and I you only had five. one day left you only had one day left in the season to get this accomplished in your neighboring that's right. state that's right that's good I had one more afternoon not even a morning hunt and I dropped my wife off to uh, to get our children from my parents <laughs> drove to Louisiana and hunted that <laughs> afternoon, trying to give it one last hoorah, and unfortunately, I did not make it happen. We uh, got Louisiana of all states left to go into one more year. That's correct. That's correct. But man, I tell you, it's uh, the people that I've met, and you know, and kind of going back to one thing that I, I, I failed to mention, you know, and we've talked about this before, but yeah. I, I definitely want to try to kill a turkey in every state, but more so than that, I hope when it's all said and done, by the way I've tried to achieve this goal in networking with people, I hope I can yeah. say I've got a friend in every state. And I definitely have just met some great, great people from Arkansas to the chapter presidents for the NWTF in Delaware and Maryland. Uh, matter of fact, that gentleman has, has called me today and is Lining up a hunt to come down and hunt some hogs here in Mississippi, and oh uh, wow, you know you just there's there's no there's no substitute for those friendships that I've made with those individuals. There's, there's just, that's right. All right, we got to take a break. Dr. Clay Johnson's gonna stay over because we got something that was cool, but we even got something better to talk about. Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of Dr. Clay Johnson and listen to the Eagle.
Welcome back in to Listen to the Eagle. You're live. Calling radio show, hunting, fishing, God, family, country, and anything Paul Ott wants to talk about. Bird Ott Caruth, your host, coming to you live from the Reeves Metal Studio at the beautiful Farm Bureau building in Jackson, Mississippi. Alongside Paul Ott, who's down in the Scenic Rivers region at beautiful Lake Dixie Springs. We've got our special guest, Dr. Clay Johnson, who's also in the Scenic Rivers region and does most of his hunting down in that beautiful area. I invite each and every one of y'all to go to www.visitscenicrivers.com. That's visitscenicrivers.com. Dr. Clay Johnson has uh, one of the coolest quests in all of hunting. It's to harvest a turkey in all 49 states that have turkey season. And uh, he has updated us, and he had a cliffhanger. He was there, but his neighboring state is the last hanging chad, as I'd say, Louisiana. <laughs> we got it all accomp accomplished, but Louisiana. Well, I want to segue into this next deal that, that gives me chills, and, and not because it's about me, but I do want to open with this because I want the listeners to know that I truly understand what you're about to share and how important it is, and so many of you listeners will too, because Dr. Clay Johnson allowed me to, to have a precious moment two years ago when he allowed my son, Kate Ott, to go out on some of his hunting land and got a turkey called up, and it was just the most awesome thing that I got to experience and watch my son harvest his first turkey, and it just is something that I can never repay you for, and I know I've, I've thanked you a hundred times, but thank you for that. But please, please share now where we are with your son and what he is on the verge of doing. This is awesome. Well, I tell you, this is uh, this is probably the dearest thing to my heart. Uh, turkey hunting is very special, but, you know, obviously God first and family second. I have uh, two boys. The Lord has blessed me with two sons, uh, healthy boys. Um, and my youngest, who's five, and my oldest is 11, um, he, he loves to hunt and fish. And my, and my oldest one loves to fish. Now, he's, uh, he's, he's more of a fisherman than he is a hunter. But uh, my youngest hunted a good bit with him during deer season. And, and uh, just as honest as I can be when I say this, you know, the way he, we quote-unquote killed deer was, you know, dad me held the gun, scoped the deer, and, and you know, Samuel pulled the trigger for me. But when right, the season was right. over with, he said, Dad, he said, I really want to kill a turkey, but I want to kill it by myself. And I said, well, son, that, I think that's awesome. I said, but at the same time, we're just not going to bebop out there and try to shoot a turkey. I said, we're going to practice. We're going to do our homework. We're going to prepare for it, and, um, and then we'll go hunting. So he was committed. He was committed to put in the time to target shoot. Uh, we start. I started him off with a little 22 single shot cricket and a little youth gun that put a little scope on it, um, you know. And he he had gotten pretty pretty accurate with it, you know. Yeah. I, but the, the the question was, how do I make that transition from the from the 22 cricket to the the 410 shotgun? Um, right. Again, he's five years old, um, just as honest as I can be. He he. He can't hold a gun up. I mean, he can hold his little twenty-two cricket, but he's just, just not big enough. So I uh, did a lot of talking to friends and finally came up with a scenario. I had a 410 modified, took off two and a half inches off the stock, and put the same scope on his 410 as he had on his little twenty-two cricket. And um, I did not know if I was going to let him shoot it before we went hunting or if it was just going to be the thrill of the hunt, let that adrenaline run, and he'd never know it. But uh, he actually had to stay home from preschool that day and, and was been fighting a little bit of, under the weather. And he fell asleep mm. early that night. But the next day I took him hunting, and we called up one old lone long beard. And that long beard strutted around that decoy for five and a half minutes. And... As anyone will know, when you've got a long beard at 15 yards and you're watching five and a half minutes, that's like an eternity. Oh, but man. He, he held it together, and he finally pulled the trigger, and he killed his, his first turkey by himself, which I was um, – that was my goal. I just wanted to get Samuel a turkey for the spring. 
Yeah. Uh, didn't know how long that would take to accomplish. Uh, just really didn't know what, how this was going to unfold. But on the second day of youth season, that had been March the 9th, he killed his first long beard. Well, then he followed that up the next Tuesday by killing a Jake. Oh, my goodness. So all he could do was I was heading to Florida the next weekend. He's like, Dad, I want to go to Florida. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll go to Florida. So I told my wife, I was like, I'm taking him with me. With me. And, and sure enough, we went to Florida. And the first morning down there, this old long beard Osceola come running in there to our setup. And, again, I have his 410 patterned at 15 yards. I All mean, right. that's, that's – I don't want to take a – I mean, he can shoot it out to a little bit further than that, but that's, that's, that's where his pattern is the best at. And so uh, he killed an Osceola in Florida. And so he's at that point, he's two birds away from a grand slam. At five years old. Do what now? I said at five years old. At five years old. I called my wife. I said, pack your bags because we're going to Texas. (laughs) So (laughs) the next weekend, me and my wife and my oldest and my youngest went to Texas for opening weekend in Texas. And I had a little small setback. Um, We we had two long beards come in, and we really weren't prepared. It was a quick setup, and um, they they wound up kind of figuring out something was going on. They got a little spooked and started going away, and he took a shot. It was a little bit too far, but uh, he didn't he didn't connect. And uh, you can imagine uh, mm. it, it 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 hurt us it hurt his feelings. But uh, I tried to explain to him that if, if you're hunting, you're gonna miss. You know that's, that's right. That's just part of it. So he uh, kept it together, and the next next morning, uh, he and I actually doubled in Texas. Uh, I caught up. Three long beards. He shot and killed one of those, and so we we we, we regather ourselves after after his miss. Uh, that was midday on the first day, opening day of Texas. So the next morning, uh, we I caught up three long beards. Uh, he put it on one of them. He killed one, and then the the other two ran off. And of course, that turkey. Uh, started moving, and, and, and the other turkeys came back to, to jump on it, and I was able to kill one as well. So he and I both killed, if you want to call it, not a true double, uh, but at the same time we killed in the same setting within just a few seconds. So wow. he, at that point, had killed three birds of the four that he needed to complete the Grand Slam. And thankfully, I had one weekend available coming up here in about two weeks. And, you know, I, 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 you know each time you go somewhere, even on the quest that I've been on, you know, there's different rules, there's different regulations. And, you know, you have to sure. you know, read up and, and follow up, make sure you're, you're doing things properly. And, and I was planning on taking him to South Dakota, which is where I, I – I, I've taken several young kids and, and adults for that matter, and, and they've killed some turkeys at this place I hunt. And, but I found out that you cannot get a tag in the state of South Dakota until you're 12 years old. So oh, man. Samuel was not legal to hunt there. I uh, found out that was the case in a couple of other states as well. But in the state of Nebraska, he can get a, he can get a tag. And I have made arrangements for he and I to, we are traveling the third weekend of May to go hunt the fourth and final subspecies, the Miriam's turkey in the state of Nebraska. And man, um, you're giving me chills, man. Chills. That's so I, awesome. I, I, I just can't tell you how, um, just how blessed I am to, to share this moment with him and um, to see his, genuine excitement of, of when he harvested that bird and, and uh, the adrenaline is pumping how he's able to 
keep it all together. And, and, and again, I emphasize it's not dead, you know, making that shot for him. I mean, he's the one who is handling the gun and putting it on him. And, and, and just, uh, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. All right, folks, what a show. Dr. Clay Johnson, want to thank him. Sam Clement, want to thank him. Want to thank you for allowing us to be with you. Love all y'all. Love you, Paul Lott. See you next week.